The OnePlus 12 is the sub $1,000 phone to beat in 2024. If I was Samsung or Google, I'd be worried. Find out why in Android Police's review of the OnePlus 12 30 days later. I've had this phone in my pocket for about a month now, and I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. It's a $799 phone, which is $100 more than the Pixel 8, but matches the iPhone 15's and Galaxy S24's prices. That's some pretty astute company, especially given those phones are available in carrier stores and the OnePlus 12 isn't. You're going to have to buy this thing online if you're in the US. But don't let that put you off. The OnePlus 12 is an unapologetically top tier flagship smartphone. It packs in some of the best specs across the board from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 system on chip, 12 or 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory, 256 gigabytes or 512 gigs of storage, and a 5400 milliamp hour battery with 100 watt fast charging and 50 watt wireless charging. But OnePlus is already known for its performance and battery. This phone goes beyond that. We're treated to a 6.82 inch Quad HD Plus LTPO 120Hz AMOLED display and crucially a very capable camera cluster with a 50 megapixel main, 48 megapixel ultra wide and a 64 megapixel 3x periscope telephoto. Now that's a lot of information to take in so let's break it down. This is one of the fastest phones on the market. So much so that I have absolutely no doubts about it staying fast for its four years of big updates and an extra year of security patches. It doesn't matter if you're a gamer, a social butterfly, or you just fancy shooting your first short film on your phone. My review unit never missed a beat, and that's likely helped by the large vapor chamber cooling solution that OnePlus has employed here. The phone does get warm sometimes, but it never gets hot because of that giant cooling plate. It dissipates the heat really, really effectively. I'm sure this performance is absolutely no surprise to those of you who are keeping up with the latest and greatest smartphones, but if you've not used a OnePlus phone in the past couple of generations, the battery life might surprise you. Sure, the 5400 milliamp hour battery is likely doing the bulk of the work here, that is a big battery, but Oxygen OS has a hand in it too. This phone has been a two day device for me ever since I got out of the box. And that doesn't necessarily mean 48 hours every time, although it has done that several occasions. It means from the moment I get up on a Monday to the time I go to bed on a Tuesday. So about 40 hours. That usually means six and a half to eight hours of screen on time with my Garmin Phoenix watch permanently connected over Bluetooth, mostly Wi-Fi connectivity on the phone, and lots of Reddit and Discord usage. For reference, I had the display in the highest resolution and the highest refresh rate straight out of the box. It has outlasted the Pixel 8, the 8 Pro and the Galaxy S24 Ultra in my testing and in the cases of the Pixel by a substantial margin too. And when you need to charge it, guess what? OnePlus includes a charger in the box. It's not any old charger, it's an 80 watt brick in the US or 100 watt brick which is what I have internationally topping the thing up from 0 to 100 in just half an hour. Did I mention the charger was included in the box by the way? Good luck finding a Galaxy or a Pixel with one of those these days. OnePlus made headlines with its astonishing 4500 nit peak brightness in HDR with its screen and I don't want to disappoint you but it's not insanely brighter than the Pixel 8 Pro's 2400 nit display even though it sounds like about half of the brightness. It is brighter than the Pixel but the new OnePlus has been tested in a very specific way to achieve that number. The display is marvelous. It's big, it gets incredibly bright, so outdoor viewing shouldn't be a concern. It's also razor sharp and very fluid thanks to that high refresh rate, which makes this thing a dream to game on. If you watch any kind of longer form content on your phone at all, then the OnePlus 12's panel is fantastic. However, it's not my favorite display out there for a couple of reasons. The first is that the company has a strange tendency to include a flatter color profile than you might expect. The natural mode which it comes with out of the box almost looks a little bleak and while switching over to Vivid definitely improves things, it gives a little more punch to the whole situation, it's still maybe not quite there. It doesn't have that pop or that extra vividness that you would expect from a Vivid profile compared to something like a Galaxy Ultra phone. My second gripe with the display is ironically a lack of flatness when it comes to the, the glass on the front. The curved edges look cool and they give the phone a sleek profile, 
but I have had a fair few phantom touches and tapping the wrong thing occur when using the 12 one handed. This happens all the time. My hands are small to medium size, so I imagine someone with bigger mitts probably won't have the same kind of issues, but it is something that I've noticed that on other phones that have recently come out, I've just not had a problem with. As much as I think the OnePlus 12 is a really nice phone to hold, the camera housing is divisive. It's a design decision that can definitely split opinion, but it does make for a good resting spot for my pointy finger. This design is getting a little long in the tooth. Uh, you can see traces of it back in the OnePlus 10 with the square camera housing, and way more so in last year's OnePlus 11. It's not awful, but I think the company could do with making a bit of a switch up. About 60% of the people I showed this phone to said they didn't like the giant camera housing, it stood out too much. And I think if OnePlus wants to get more of the market share, it's going to have to sort of tone down its wacky design language as much as many of us would dislike that. From a build quality perspective, my 30 days have been very enjoyable. The phone feels tight, it feels well made, it's durable, and thanks to the IP65 weatherproofing, I was confident it wasn't going to just die out in the rain. Despite not running a case on mine, it hasn't picked up any crazy dings, dents, or deep scratches, and I did leave the included screen protector on because why not? It doesn't look bad either. As always, I love the three-stage alert toggle. It's a wonderful thing to have, and I hope OnePlus keeps it, and I only bring this up because Apple has gone for that weird action button thing, and hopefully OnePlus doesn't copy them with this regard. Haptics feel tight, the speakers are loud and clear, and my signal quality has been more than good enough with the 12. I've never really had the best luck with in-display fingerprint scanners. This optical one is all right, but I do think at this price point, OnePlus could have gone for sort of an ultrasonic unit for better reliability. This is definitely not the worst in-display fingerprint scanner on the market, but I just felt a couple more times than I'd like that I had to input my pin because it just wouldn't pick up my fingerprint. Speaking of this price point, it's all eyes on the camera when you charge this much for a phone, and with Samsung, Google, and Apple sitting pretty at the top, this thing has some big shoes to fill, which I'm absolutely delighted to say it does very well indeed. Look, this isn't the best camera on a smartphone, but OnePlus has made some huge leaps with its 12 and it gets shockingly close to the competition. If you've seen my comparison with the OnePlus 12 and the Pixel 8 Pro, you'll know that in a lot of scenarios, the OnePlus 12 is neck and neck with the Google flagship camera when it comes to color temperature, focus speed, accurate exposure, and color and contrast. Just let that sink in for a second. A OnePlus keeping up with a Pixel. The 12's images are perhaps a little more hit and miss, and though at a glance the images look sharp and detailed, it's clear that the firm is employing quite a strong sharpening filter here, making some images look a little unnatural, but by and large, whether you're using the 48 megapixel ultra wide, 50 megapixel main, or 64 megapixel three times telephoto, this is a seriously capable camera. The six times mode, which bear with me here, is a two times crop on a three times zoom, does a great job of capturing detail, so don't be put off by the fact it's not a, an out and out 5X optical. In most scenarios, actually, it does beat out the Pixel 8 Pro's long range shooter, and you get heaps of modes too, including portrait, where you can change the simulated aperture, master mode for the manual controls and raw capture options, night mode, long exposure, and thanks to the Hasselblad partnership, stuff like XPan for simulating film imagery from the ultra rare and very expensive X-Pan camera system. Might be a bit gimmicky, but it's really cool that Hasselblad and OnePlus have worked on this. Not to mention the really solid video, which is available at a range of different frame rates and resolutions. I would probably just stick to Ultra HD 4K 30 or 60, though 8K 24 is available should you want it. I personally don't. Uh, the video does look very smooth, it reacts well to changes in exposure and focus subjects, and honestly, this could be one of the better camera packages at this price point, to be quite honest. And this is a quick test of the portrait video mode, so what you do is put it in video and then it gives you, uh, you can change the virtual aperture. This is down to f1.4, however when you do this, you do unfortunately have to revert to full HD 30p selfie recording instead of ultra HD 30p selfie recording. This is also a test of the inbuilt microphones, so hopefully you can kind of hear what you're going to be getting with this. None of the similarly priced Pixel 8, Galaxy S24 or iPhone 15 offer this balance of quality and versatility in my opinion. That said, there is an asterisk, isn't there? OnePlus hasn't included any kind of AI tools unlike its competition. 
This means that, sure, the OnePlus 12 captures some great imagery, but there's nothing included to augment pictures and video, such as Galaxy AI, Magic Editor, Audio Eraser, and this might make some prospective buyers think twice about buying the 12 because those features are actually quite good and they're very useful as well. Not having them on the 12 just feels like an elephant in the room. Oxygen OS is not quite there when it comes to the polish and feeling of usage. For example, game mode hyperboost is great, but why does it come up when I open my banking application? And I can't shake the feeling that the OnePlus 12 is just an Oppo with a different badge. I feel like OnePlus should really try and diversify and shake things up in the software design, not just the hardware design as I mentioned earlier. The OnePlus 12 isn't a perfect phone, but you know what? With an excellent display, super battery life and performance, and a very, very capable camera stack, the OnePlus 12 is the sub thousand dollar phone to beat in 2024. Let me know what you think of the OnePlus 12 and check out my comparison to the Pixel 8 Pro if you haven't already, that is a big comparison. Hit like and subscribe to never miss a video like this one. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police and I'll catch you later. Cheers.